Yeah, hopefully by the end of the year, going to 2022, you'll see significant um, increases in our profit margin. Uh, our operations teams and, and development teams are very busy right now, to say the least. So um, that trend should continue um, as we continue to grow. So I don't see any reason why you wouldn't see a, a double digit growth. Our ANL, um, which was our acquisition back in um, earlier in the year, uh, is all SaaS based um, and growing rapidly. We have very good reviews on that. And uh, some of the upcoming um, future acquisitions we have are also SaaS based. My guest now is Matt Herrick. He's the Chief Revenue Officer of Voxter Analytics Corp, TSX Venture Listed, F, uh, sorry, VXTR, <laughs> and in the United States under VXTRF. Matt, welcome. Welcome, thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, okay, Matt, so the Chief Revenue Officer, that's quite the hot seat to be in in any corporation, because it implies you're in charge of making money. Um, tell me about the different revenue streams that are currently being sort of plugged into Voxer with all of the acquisitions going on? That's a great question. Um, we have several different revenue streams, Jim. Um, you know, we have our, our group up in uh, Canada, ILA, former ILA group, which is now um, our RPA tax products. Um, they're on a SaaS based model, which is, which is very good for us. Um, and most of their contracts come in for, you know, two, three, four years plus with, with the government or counties, municipalities. Um, and then our groups down in, in the U.S., uh, mainly our title company is, is transactional because it's title business, and our AMC business is also transactional for the valuations. But our ANL, um, which was our acquisition back in um, earlier in the year, uh, is all SaaS-based um, and growing rapidly. We have very good reviews on that. And uh, some of the upcoming um, future acquisitions we have are also SaaS-based. Okay, so then safe to say revenue is growing quarter on quarter. Is it safe to say, I mean, we've almost seen double digit revenue growth quarter on quarter, uh, but we really haven't seen that in the financials because you've only started reporting the combined entities as of the last quarter. So yes, is it safe to say, and in full recognition that these are forward looking statements, is it safe to say that double digit quarter on quarter is a reasonable expectation to have from the company going forward for the next year? Yes, sir. Uh, there's a couple reasons why I say that. Um, aside from the fact that um, obviously we've made some acquisitions and we have growth, we've also made some investments in people. And we've brought on some, some industry veterans that um, are, are very um, articulate in the whole mortgage life cycle that can speak to all of our products and services. And as we're bringing these folks in, their pipelines are growing. It takes you know, a couple months for some of you to come in in the business development and grow a pipeline, but we've made some significant investments in people. And we're starting to see you know, that pipeline grow massively. Um, we're starting to see some of those well, deals come in and contracts getting signed. Uh, our operations teams and, and development teams are very busy right now, to say the least. So um, that trend should continue um, as we continue to grow. So I don't see any reason why you wouldn't see a, a double digit growth. So this, uh, this digitization of the real estate ecosystem that's happening under Voxter's sort of leadership, is that going to create a larger total addressable market for the for the real estate business and all of its little sort of sub ecosystems? Yes, I believe so. And the digitization has been a, a popular word in, in the real estate space for a while, um, but it is happening. It's, it's a real event and um, we're in the forefront of it. Uh, you know, if you look at what we're doing and the moves we've made, at some point we're gonna span a whole entire life cycle of a mortgage. And, and anything can help reduce the cost um, of, of doing a, a mortgage uh, reduce the time frame is going to be very important, we think, in the future. So the things that we're doing and building are, are all going towards that and, and utilizing, also utilizing data and other things that we're, we're bringing in to, to make that a reality. So the recurring streams of uh, SaaS revenue, software as a service, um, as, you, as you combine these on a single platform, the thing that attracts me to the whole Voxter value proposition is this idea that, well, the costs of offering all of these combined sort of processes does not, is, it doesn't add directly to the cost of operating the system. It's somewhat, you know, it, it costs more or less the same to just bolt on all these things. So, so is there a reasonable expectation for the profit margins to continue to increase? It's a very good point, yes. Um, as, as, you, as you hit a certain tier, it, it goes into the black a lot heavier because we've already we've already uh, absorbed all your hard costs. 
Um, and so, yes, that, that is our goal. Um, obviously, that's the projections that, that you hear Jim and Gary talking about when they're, when they're speaking. Um, you know, hopefully by the end of the year, going to 2022, you'll see significant um, increases in our profit margin. And do you see any competitors out there in your sort of universe that constitute a serious threat to your ability to grow? There's competitors in all of our areas that we, that we do business in. Um, and the good news is in our industry, there's plenty of work to go around. So, um, you know, yeah, yeah, we're always going to run to competition. Competition is good. But we feel like that, that we do things a little differently. Uh, we're, we're very nimble. Um, we don't try to do out of the box. We, we work with our – we consider our customers partners. We work with them on customization and, and things that help their business grow and, and try to build a relationship. We're helping them grow their business as well. And so we think that our, our model is a little different than what we see out there, and it's and it's and um, and it works. And those are the kind of customers we want. And so, um, yeah, of course, there's competition, but there's, there is plenty of work to go around. I think that uh, it, it will be fine. The situation in the U.S. right now with a moratorium on, mar- on mortgages coming to an end, is that going to cause increased sort of workflow across your platform? Yes, sir. Um, you know, our, we have our, our sister company is a law firm that does a lot of default work. And so we um, supply them the technology they use. So there'll be some increases there. Um, it, increases, it should increase our title business, uh, mainly on the Brightline title side, uh, which is heavily in default. And so, um, yeah, we should see a very good lift there. Also in our, in our BPO space too, for, for valuations, as well as A now. Right. And is Voxer going to focus just on the North American market or will you make moves into Europe and elsewhere? Uh, that is yet to be determined, but right now our primary focus is North America. Sure. Okay. And what kind of volume are you expecting in terms of uh, mortgage transactions, for example, in the in the upcoming year? Yeah, you know, that that's a hard one. Um, you see many different predictions out there in the marketplace, um, with you know rates remaining low. You'll see a, a consistent refi volume still. Um, you could see home equity bounce back a little bit. A lot of times, if rates go up, you see some home equity. Uh, purchase market is strong, but there's a, not a lot of inventory right now. And if the more terms lifted, that creates a default market. So there's going to be a marketplace for, for one of those. So there'll always be a strong market, but we just don't know what angle it's going to go at yet. Right. We're prepared for all of them, though. <laughs> yeah. So then you guys have got right now appraisals and title insurance and search, and you've got the legal uh, escrow services and. So what else is there to be added to the Boxster ecosystem that will continue to sort of expand the offering overall? Um, you're going to see uh, in the future um, some more data opportunities to customize some data solutions to help um, with monitoring of a portfolio, for example, um, for helping out with real estate agents um, in their farm packages and, and apps and things of that nature. Um, and that, that's, you know, those are all synergistic to our current business model. So you'll see growth in those areas and, and just continue to enhance our current product sets. As a uh, investor in real estate, I look at your, your platform and I think, my gosh, this could be so useful for, you know, improving the performance of my real estate portfolio. Uh, just because volumetrically I can do a lot more transactions if I'm plugged into this. Do you have a client base that is significantly focused on the real estate investment market? Yes, sir. Uh, that, that, that's, um, we are heavily involved in, in, in going after that market. Um, you have different kind of markets for that. You have like the fix and flip type uh, single plan rental, SFR. Um, all those areas are expanding. We're seeing a great movement there. Uh, there's been a, actually in with the reopening, I guess you could say, there's been a few conferences that have started in that world. We've had great success with those and, and, and meeting some, some new customers that are getting into that space, um, providing them data in that world and, and things of that nature. So, um, yes, there, there's a lot of products that uh, we're coming out with that will be very, very focused in that marketplace. Well, that's great, Matt. I really appreciate your time today. We'll come back to you soon. Thanks for your time. Hey, it's great to see you, Jim. Thank you. You bet. Bye for now. Bye.